So here we are looking at the dot product and its relation to parallel and orthogonal vectors, how we can use the dot product to determine if vectors are parallel or orthogonal. So to get us started, let's consider the geometric interpretation of the dot product. So we know that vector u dot vector v is equivalent to the magnitude of vector u multiplied by the magnitude of vector v multiplied by cosine of theta. And this is such that theta is greater than or equal to zero, less than or equal to pi. Now, since the dot product of two vectors is a scalar, two special cases immediately arise from this definition. And that is the case for parallel and orthogonal or perpendicular vectors. So let's take a closer look. We can say that vector u and vector v are orthogonal, which is just another word for perpendicular. So these two vectors are orthogonal if their dot product is zero. So this is a new definition for us. We say that two vectors are orthogonal if their dot product is zero. So to help us better understand where this is coming from, let's think about a graphical representation of this. So what I want to do is go ahead and let theta be 90 degrees or pi by two radians. So what would this look like graphically? We would have some vector here, vector u, and we'll say here is our beautiful vector v. And we can easily see that these two vectors are intersecting at a right angle. So they're intersecting where theta is pi by two. So let's plug this into the geometric interpretation. So we can see that vector u dot vector v is equal to the magnitude of vector u multiplied by the magnitude of vector v multiplied by cosine of pi over two. And we of course know that cosine of pi by two is equal to zero. So this shows us here that vector u dot vector v is equal to zero when theta is pi by two, which implies that vector u and vector v are perpendicular. Woohoo! So a nice quick graphical confirmation of what we're observing. Now case two, has two subcases. So case two, we say that vector u and vector v are parallel when vector u dot vector v is equal to plus or minus the magnitude of vector u times the magnitude of vector v. So this is another way for us to determine the relationship between those two vectors. And there's two cases here. So again, let's explore this using graphical illustrations. So case number one, I want to go ahead and let theta be zero. So this implies that these two vectors are intersecting at zero degrees. Or in other words, they're pointing in the same direction. So we can say, to illustrate this, we'll let this be our vector u. And then vector v must be pointing in the same direction here. So we'll say that's vector v. So these two vectors have the same initial point, And the angle they're intersecting at is 0. So let's plug this into the geometric definition to confirm our observations. So we have vector u dot vector v is equal to the magnitude of vector u multiplied by the magnitude of vector v multiplied by cosine of zero. And we of course know that cosine of zero is equal to one. So we can see that therefore vector u dot vector v is equal to positive magnitude of vector u multiplied by the magnitude of vector v. And this is when theta is zero. And we can see from our illustration here that vector u and vector v are parallel.
Now, what about the negative case? What angle will create minus the magnitude of vector u multiplied by the magnitude of vector v? Well, what about if we go ahead and let theta be equal to pi? So now our two vectors still have the same initial point, but they're pointing in the opposite directions. So let's say here is our vector u, and here is vector v. And the angle in between them is 180 degrees, or pi radians. So plugging this into our geometric definition, we have vector u dot vector v, is equal to the magnitude of vector u multiplied by the magnitude of vector v multiplied by cosine of pi. And we, of course, know that cosine of pi is equal to negative 1. So this leaves us with the dot product of u and v being equal to minus the magnitude of vector u multiplied by vector v. And again, this is when theta is pi, thus confirming that vector u and vector v are parallel. So now let's go ahead and take this knowledge and look at some examples. Determine if the following vectors are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. So let's think about the vectors that we're given here. We have vector u in R2 defined by the components 2, negative 1. And we also have a vector v defined by the components in R2, negative one-half, positive one-fourth. So these components look awfully similar. So let's play around with some scalar multiples. So I'm going to start here by thinking about our vector u. So looking at this vector u and its relationship to vector v, what about if we multiply both sides of this vector by negative one-fourth? We'll take this negative one-fourth on the right-hand side and distribute it through to both factors, which leaves us with negative one-half, positive one-fourth. Hey, that's equal to vector v. Woohoo! So we can say that, therefore, since vector v is equal to negative one-fourth multiplied by vector, two, uh, vector u, they're scalar multiples, and so vector u and vector v are parallel by definition. Now, this is not an exclusive solution. We could also work in the reverse order. So what about if we start here by thinking about vector v? And again, looking at its relationship to vector u, what about if we take this vector and we multiply both sides by negative 4? And again, we'll distribute this negative 4 through to both terms, which leaves us with a positive 2, negative 1, which is equal to vector u. And so therefore, we can say that therefore, since vector u is equal to negative 4 times vector v, they're scalar multiples, and so though, therefore, vector u and vector v are parallel. So either answer here, you only need one, but both of them are perfect. Determine if the following vectors are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. So looking at these given vectors, u and v, I don't see any greatest common factors or scalar multiples standing out. So let's go ahead and check if the vectors are orthogonal. So to begin, we can recall that u and v are orthogonal, if their dot product is equal to zero. So if u dot v equals zero, then vector u and vector v intersect at a 90 degree angle, or are orthogonal. So let's check this. Let's see if this holds true in this case. So taking the dot product, we have vector u dot vector v, or vector v dot vector u. So here we have 6, negative 2, negative 1, and we're dotting this with the vector 2, 5, 2. So 6 times 2 gives us 12, negative 2 times 5 is negative 10, minus 1, mi 
times two is negative two, which gives us zero. Woohoo! So therefore, since the dot product of u and v is equal to zero, vector u and vector v are orthogonal to each other, or perpendicular. And this is our beautiful final answer.